Hey, thank you for being patient. I am ready now to talk about the cauldron fountain. Um, I was trying to wrap up summer, get a daughter off to college. Things just got a little crazy. They're all in school now, so things have calmed down a bit. Um, I'm excited to talk about this. And one reason isn't just to show you how I did this, but to show you that you have to work through problems as you're creating something. Um, it's not as simple as follow a tutorial or follow how to, and it's done. And I think that's where some people get frustrated um, when they're watching a tutorial, a video tutorial, and their project isn't quite working out. When you're making something, realize that a lot of times you need to step back and reanalyze what's causing the issue. How can I cr fix that? How, what is a creative solution to this problem? And so we'll talk about that. There's a few things I would do differently and there's a few things um, I'd change just slightly. Um, and hopefully that helps you realize that, you know, you don't just sit down and poof, it's, it's perfect. It usually isn't. It takes a lot of patience <laughs> and um, ingenuity and um, sometimes you just have to walk away and then come back to it. Even though it seems super, super straightforward and simple, um, there's there's some kinks you have to work through. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, I think the best way to talk about this is to start at the top and then move our way down. Um, so we can talk at one piece at a time. The cauldrons are just those basic plastic cauldrons you get at party stores. You can get them at Amazon. I think you can get them at Oriental Trading. Um, so we'll start with the top one, start with the top one, sorry. Um, and you can see that I made a little niche in here. I think I just used a utility knife to get that. You don't want to cut too big um, because I did that on a couple other cauldrons and they tend to like fall in on each other. They just don't have the strength. But a little one like this um, worked perfectly. And what I did is I filled the inside rim because the rims are hollow with, I'll show you here, just insulation foam, like the spray one. Um, and it's great stuff for glue and filling. Um, I just, a word of caution, if you just use it and just paint it, it will fall apart with time. Um, it doesn't like the elements at all. But for putting it on the inside here, it's perfect. And then after I filled the inside, because I, I knew you'd be looking up into it, and so I wanted it to look like iron, you know, not hollow. And then I just took my epoxy sculpt, which I talked about in um, the video um, that I made about these these books. This is epoxy sculpt here. And I just covered it um, to make it look more solid um, and not flimsy. Um, I took a lot of time in um, getting that super smooth um, making it look really nice. And um, I think I then I just took some and spread extras on here to age this and then just painted that with blacks and um, browns um, on there to give it more of an aged iron look. So this piece right here is just a piece of warbla. Um, I talked about that as well when I talked about my um, waterproof spell books and it's just cut and attached there. I attached it at the same time that I was putting the epoxy sculpt on, so it's a nice, smooth transition there. Um, put a little under here, and then painted it to match the rest. It just gives a nice path for the water to flow and then come down into the bigger cauldron. I needed to make a path for the water to flow. I took a piece of plexiglass and cut it down, heated it with a heat gun until it would bend and popped it into the cauldron. I did leave it slightly rounded. 
Once I got it where I wanted, I glued it down. Then I added layers of resin. I needed to build it up a bit so there was a smooth transition between the plexiglass and the piece of warbler. I got all fancy doing different layers with different colors and swirls and I think that was totally pointless because you can't see it anyway so I would skip doing that and just pour the resin in, maybe add some blue or green to get it the color you want. If you do add resin, make sure you prop your cauldron. Resin will dry level so you need to decide where you want that level plane to be and prop your cauldron accordingly. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the lights. So. What I used are pond lights. I need to just make like one of those Amazon pages so you guys can at least see what I purchased. This was a good purchase. I just purchased the wrong type. Okay, to explain that, it saved me some money to buy two in one instead of just one and one. So it's two pond lights with the same cords that connect to the same outlet which left me with all this extra cording, which is just silly. I don't, I wish I hadn't because then I could run the cording out with the tubing and it wouldn't drive me nuts. Instead, I'm like, I have to zip tie it and connect it and kind of hide it. So that was a mistake. So there's one here and I need to attach this better at the bottom. It just kept floating up. So I think I'm gonna take some of that epoxy sculpt and just really attach it to the bottom so it doesn't go anywhere because it, those little suction cups don't work very well and it just would float to the top. And then there's another one behind this and I'm gonna turn on the light so you can see it. Hold up. Now you can see it glowing and it's just got a switch where you can change the colors um, to get the color that you want. Obviously this one has a blue green tone and so I wanted that. Um, and it's glued to this. Um, I think I use like Gorilla Glue. Um, and then I put the, um, the plastic piece and the resin on top of it after it was in there and secure. Um, I know that's a little bit of a risk if it ever went out, I'd probably have to cut into the back of it and replace it. Um, but that's just kind of how I roll. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see how many years I get out of it before it needs to be replaced. The smaller top cauldron is just attached with PVC pipe elbow. I found closet rod flanges for a decent price on Amazon. They're 38 millimeter. They're on my Amazon page if you want to look at them. I used a half inch elbow to connect the flange to the PVC pipe. I would highly recommend you get the flanges first and then take them to the hardware store to make sure everything fits right. Then I just screwed it directly into the cauldron and added some glue. I used Gorilla Clear glue here. Water should never get down into the bottom of the cauldron because of the plexiglass, so I wasn't worried about making a couple of holes there. All of the cables and tubing are strapped to the PVC pipe with zip ties. As you can see, I spray painted the PVC after attaching the zip ties. Don't do that. Be smart and paint it first. The bottom is the same thing. The closet flange is screwed directly into a piece of wood and the PVC pipe is added with a coupler. The measurements from the top of the flange down to the length of the PVC to the base flange is 31 inches, but you would just need to adjust that to achieve the look that you want. Okay, on the top here you can see I have a couple of holes. Um, the bottom one is for the cable with the lighting underneath there, and this top one is to hold the tubing, and I kept that nice and tight so the tubing doesn't move around. You can see on the cauldron I cut a couple of holes. I don't know what that second hole is, ignore it. First hole there, that's where the tubing comes up and through and attaches to the top and then I had to zip tie everything to clean it up. Here it is turned on. I would recommend you don't do it inside your house. Take it outside, you'll get wet as you do this because you're gonna be adjusting everything. You're going to be adjusting the top hose to get it to fall where you want. You're going to be adjusting where the base sits and pushing it out and in. Um, and then there's another part you need to adjust right here. I'll show you this. Here is the pump adjusting knob so you can control the amount of water pressure you need to get to get things flowing correctly for your setup. I used a 400 gallon per hour pump. It's on my Amazon shopping page if you wanna check it out. Just fill up the bottom cauldron, make sure your tubing is all where it needs to go, plug it in and watch the water flow. So the next problem I ran into is I put the book here, this waterproof spell book, like here, I kind of, um, it, it was actually screwed right into the PVC pipe. And the problem is, is it would, 
they, I still would get this few drips coming down this way, even with all of this. And they would hit this book and then they would come down here and you can see it even dyed it <laughs> blue because I put food coloring in the water and it would then drip down here, which was fine, except for it hit this, it totally uh, stained it. And then the wood piece underneath, and I'll show you how that all works, um, actually cracked. So this, this was causing, this is causing a lot of issues. So that's not gonna go there anymore. I think what I'm gonna do is because I still wanna add toadstools and frogs to this, I might add some like cattails coming up through here um, just to kind of hide this. I also thought like it might be cute to have like a skeleton hand kind of holding it up. Um, my original idea was kind of too big. I wanted like mice on top of each other holding it up and then I realized that that would take me forever and decided that was a no-go. Okay, so the base of this is just a piece of round wood that I bought from the hardware store. Um, you can see where the water was splashing, like I was saying, and it actually cracked it. Um, so I think I'm gonna actually put a piece of like clear plastic on the top, like, like a grandma couch <laughs> to protect it a little bit more. And then it literally just sits on top of an old stool that I have. I do, it was just sitting around my house. So here's a close up of the paint job. You can see I used browns and yellows and just sponged them on there to give it an aged look. The poor rope turned a nice aqua color because I used food coloring in the water. I like blue and green. That way you can see it in the day and then when the lights turn out on at night, it looks amazing. That's how I made my cauldron water feature. I love the way it sounds in my yard all October. I run it day and night because I love it so much. Sometimes I have to refill the water. She can run a little low, but I think that was a big problem with the spell book because it was causing it to lose a bit of water. I'd also recommend you put it somewhere in your yard that you're not concerned about things getting wet or next to props that you're concerned getting wet as well. Hopefully this served as a little inspiration to get you started and making something similar for Halloween.